Okay, well, we are excited to have Ryan. He's going to talk to us a little bit more about Facebook. I know we kind of just touched on it during the Q&A, um, but he's going to um, talk to us about some cool things that you can teach uh, students uh, during your digital marketing classes. Um, a little bit about Ryan. Uh, he's a lecturer of marketing at the University of Tennessee, Chattanooga, and an eight-year veteran of social media and digital strategy. Uh, he has extensive experience crafting powerful digital strategies, growing active online communities, and generating engaging, consistent digital advertising. With both agency and brand experience, Brian has guided both B2B and B2C brands through all stages of development and uh, from startup to established brands. Ryan is the co-founder of Russell Marketing, a marketing consulting agency with a focus on ROI-driven uh, strategy. Uh, execution for clients all around the world. Uh, we're excited to learn more about Facebook today, how we can bring that into the classroom. Um, and so Ryan, without any further ado, uh, we're gonna turn the time over to you and I'm gonna disappear again. Awesome guys, well uh, welcome uh, to uh, this awesome Student Digital Summit. Uh, I'm incredibly excited to uh, have the honor of presenting to you. Uh, I think a lot of, uh, of the team at Stukent uh, have have utilized uh, Mimic Pro, particularly in my digital marketing classrooms, both at the undergraduate and graduate level uh, for years now. Uh, as someone who uh, manages uh, nearly a million dollars in AdWords spend every year, I can tell you that Mimic Pro does an incredible job uh, at teaching your students those practical skills uh, from, this, from the search marketing perspective. I really believe in what Stuart and, uh, and, and his team, Trevor, and everybody at the team uh, is doing. Uh, an, another quick advertisement for Stukent as well. Um, if you need a team that uh, can provide you incredible customer service, particularly when your students are having a difficult time with something, uh, they're second to none. Um, so highly recommend everything that Stukent is doing. Uh, as Trevor uh, told you, uh, I have a, a little over eight, eight years experience in the digital marketing industry. I graduated from the University of Georgia in 2010 uh, with a degree in marketing. Uh, and I have been at the UTC Rollins College of Business uh, for a little over three years now. I've worked uh, on, uh, prior to my career in higher education, uh, have worked on both the brand and the agency side uh, crafting digital strategies, particularly on the social media side, uh, from brands such as uh, Chattanooga Bakery, the the, the folks who uh, give you moon pies, uh, to uh, organizations like the Trust for Public Land, uh, who seek to provide public spaces uh, for people. UTC, to tell you a little bit about UTC, uh, in Chattanooga, Tennessee, uh, we're incredibly proud to be uh, the the best town ever voted twice by Outside Magazine. Uh, we're also the proud owners of the fastest internet in the entire country. Uh, so we'd love to have you at uh, in Chattanooga anytime, uh, and especially uh, would love to host you at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. It's a particularly exciting time uh, in the Rollins College of Business at, at uh, the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. A, a gentleman named Gary W. Rollins, you probably know him best as the owner of Orkin, uh, the guys who take care of all those cockroaches for you uh, just gave an incredible uh, gift to the UTC Rollins College of Business. It's the second largest gift in the history of the University of Tennessee Board of Regents. It's the largest cash gift, and it's the largest gift in the history of the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. Uh, Mr. Rollins is incredibly uh, generous to, to do that. We look forward to a long partnership uh, with him. A little bit about me. I uh, am uh, the proud husband of Sarah Russell, uh, and I have two kiddos. Uh, Emily is four years old, and Andrew is two years old. And what they don't know yet is that we're going to be taking them to Disney World next weekend. Uh, so pretty exciting time in the Russell family. Uh, and a, a little fun fact about me, I once sang the song Low Rider on stage with the band War when I was 10 years old. So it's all been downhill from there. <laughs> Awesome. So what you'll gain out of this presentation today, I want you to gain a firm grasp of what the Facebook pixel is. We, we commonly teach things like uh, search advertising and social media advertising and talk about it with our students. Uh, but new innovations like the Facebook, pix uh, Facebook pixel, I, I know Trevor was 
uh, telling you about uh, lookalike audiences and things like that. Oftentimes in the higher education world, if your experience is similar to mine, uh, those new innovations can be challenging to keep up with, particularly when those innovations require a practical understanding of this, uh, as opposed to uh, just studying. This, this stuff is rolling out so fast that it can be challenging to keep up. And so what I wanna do is first help you understand and have a firm grasp of what the Facebook Pixel actually does. Number two, I think once you've learned what it does, I think you can provide examples. Uh, I wanna provide you with examples of how to teach this to your students, right? I mean, uh, you know, things like this can be challenging in the classroom when you don't have a set advertising spend to be able to do this practically. And it can be cumbersome uh, to reach out to small businesses and allow them to uh, trust you with their brand name and their brand image uh, to allow students to, uh, to, to, to take on their advertising. So I wanna provide you some examples of how you can teach this to your students and then have an understanding of how to facilitate continued learning opportunities for your students outside of the classroom. You know, digital marketing is growing incredibly fast uh, as, as far as uh, careers in, uh, in social media advertising, in search engine advertising, in, uh, in search engine optimization, email marketing, uh, as, as Jerry shared with you, artificial intelligence. What I wanna do is help you understand how to facilitate these continued learning opportunities for social media marketing outside of the classroom. So why? Why, why is this important? Why, why uh, do I believe that uh, lecturers and professors across the countries uh, across the country should uh, pay attention for this uh, to this for your students. Well, first of all, I believe it's because there's wide ranging career applications to social media marketing, right? Uh, you know, 14 percent of the population right now uh, are entrepreneurs uh, and, and, and across the country, we're having entrepreneurship centers. We're about to set up uh, an entrepreneurship center at uh, the Rollins College of Business. We have entrepreneurship hubs and innovation hubs across the country. And a keen understanding of the power of the Facebook pixel can really give young entrepreneurs a leg up when they're starting their businesses. Right. Oftentimes, uh, they, uh, young entrepreneurs turn into, you know, if a tree falls in the forest, uh, does it make a sound right? They can have an incredible idea. But if the word doesn't get out about that idea, it's an ineffective business. And so this can be an incredible opportunity to provide young entrepreneurs a leg up and a, and a real head start when they're starting their businesses. The Facebook Pixel has a wide range of opportunities for uh, students who are interested in uh, working for a marketing agency. Uh, marketing agencies uh, are, are growing quickly and when we can provide practical skills like social media marketing, layered on top of the incredible work that professors across the country are doing uh, from a theoretical side and a strategic side, when we can have those practical skills like a keen understanding of the Facebook pixel, it creates a great interviewing conversation and a great opportunity for uh, students to step into those, uh, those positions at marketing agencies. Right, we live in the gig economy as well. If you own a car, you're a taxi company because of Uber. If you own a home or live in an apartment complex, you're now a hotel because of companies like Airbnb. When you have a marketable skill like a keen understanding of the Facebook pixel, it provides students an opportunity to join the gig economy in social media marketing. Right, Small businesses and emerging businesses will uh, be more inclined to hire them as a freelancer, to hire them as a contractor, to hire them as an intern and even consider hiring them for an entry level position because of this practical skill. Number two, I think this has a wide application uh, for the skills that students are growing at colleges across the country. Uh, Facebook Pixel requires a keen understanding of data analytics, right? Essentially what we're doing is diving into the numbers of what people are doing on our social media platforms, what they're doing on our website, what they're doing uh, even offline uh, with data that we can upload to, to Facebook and create new opportunities to learn about our consumers 
to reach more and more and more people. This has an application for our marketing research as well, right? The more that we learn about our consumers, the better we're able to reach new consumers. Essentially, what I like to tell people with the Facebook pixel is imagine you're at a grocery store or a supermarket and the can of beans that you need is on the top shelf. What the Facebook pixel simply allows you to do is to lower that shelf so that the proper item, so that the proper content is delivered at the proper time to your consumers. Right, and a, a, a keen understanding of the Facebook pixel allows your student to uh, students to flex their creative muscles as well, to create incredible advertisements, to create, uh, to be on the cutting edge of, of all that Facebook is offering from, from carousel ads to uh, unique landing page opportunities within uh, Facebook to have an immersive environment uh, within Facebook to uh, gain uh, new clients and to increase the amount of leads uh, that are being generated for these organizations. And finally, I believe a great understanding of the Facebook pixel uh, allows a wide application of the concepts uh, that professors are teaching uh, even before they reach digital marketing classes. With consumer behavior courses, uh, those applications uh, you know, are obvious within uh, the Facebook pixel. You know, all that we're doing in the Facebook pixel is understanding how to provide the right content at the right time. We're leveraging what they're learning in, in IMC classes and marketing communications courses for how to craft those messages uh, to deliver to uh, to deliver to uh, the proper audiences. If you'd like some insight uh, in, in how to help your students craft those messages, I strongly recommend the book Nicely Said by Kate Kiefer Lee and Nicole Fenton, as well as Everything Writes by Anne Handley. Uh, great, great resources. Uh, to provide your digital marketing students interested in a career in digital marketing to craft those messages as well. And then again, your creative courses, your Adobe courses that libraries are teaching to your students, this is an opportunity to provide a practical application uh, to those concepts. All right, so what is it? What is the Facebook pixel? The Facebook pixel is simply a snippet of code from your Facebook advertising account that you insert into the head tags of your website. This is not an incredibly complicated uh, thing. This is simply a piece, a snippet of code. If you have a template-based website like a Squarespace or a Wix or a Shopify site, this largely does it automatically for you. Um, what the Facebook Pixel does is it helps collect data to help you track conversions, whatever that conversion may be. Uh, we'll, we'll go through what some of those custom events are in just a second uh, for, for things that you can track in your Facebook uh, with, with your Facebook pixel. The Facebook pixel allows you to optimize ads instead of just guessing at targeting, uh, right? This is not a, a, what we used to call in the business a pay and pray uh, strategy anymore. What we're able to do is based on our consumers' actions uh, that they've taken on our website and taken on our ads, we can dynamically and automatically optimize our ads. The Facebook pixel helps us build targeted audiences for future ads, right? Trevor shared with you about lookalike audiences. What if in addition to those lookalike audiences, your marketing could continue to get smarter and smarter based on the actions that your consumers take on your website? Well, the Facebook pixel allows you to do that. And finally, the Facebook pixel allows you to remarket ads to users that have taken some type of action on your website, whether that is a page view, whether that's adding something to a shopping cart, or whether that's actually purchasing a product or joining your email list. How can the Facebook pixel be used? So these are, are, are some of those uh, unique custom events uh, that we talked about, right? It, it, the Facebook pixel can be leveraged to create website custom audiences. You can tell when someone visits your website, what pages they visited, and what time of the day or what time of the week they visited. This changes the type of content uh, that you'll produce. And, and, and based on how you're reaching folks on your social media platforms, particularly Facebook, you're able to create new content on those platforms, those owned platforms, to better reach new audiences. Based on those custom audiences, you can create targeted audience groups based on exactly what they did and provide the proper 
uh, content for the proper uh, you know, deliverable that you have for that client. You can create standard events with your Facebook pixel. So uh, adding additional coding that Facebook can provide you on specific pages of your website will tell you when certain things are happening right, searches, ads to your shopping cart, when they've initiated checkout, when they've completed registration. I've, I've created this in a bit.ly link for you to see all 18 of these custom events. If one of those custom events doesn't work for you, then Facebook allows you uh, to have custom conversions. But this is a very powerful thing uh, for you to add to uh, any business, right? I mean, why are people abandoning my shopping cart? How much are they adding to their cart? Uh, and it allows you to optimize your checkout process. It might uh, allow you to A-B test properly uh, with the layout of your website. Without this, you're really guessing and testing and flying blind uh, with how your website design looks. This gives you actually practical data uh, to make those adjustments. As I told you, since the pixel uh, tells you when uh, someone visits your website and what pages uh, they visited. We can define what a particular conversion is simply by telling Facebook the URL uh, that you know will link to that conversion, right? So uh, you know these custom conversions can even happen in an offline uh, event that you can upload to Facebook. So when someone uh, purchases a sandwich from your sandwich shop, but they did that following engaging your Facebook ad, that that custom conversion. Uh, can be added via the Facebook pixel. You can have conversion tracking in place. Once we define what that conversion is on our website, we'll then be able to track when a conversion happens or a visit to a specific page on the website. Then we can filter those results to make more meaningful and more valuable experiences for our customers. We can have conversion optimization in place uh, to where when we select what conversion we want, uh, we want on our site, Facebook will actually optimize that ad uh, and, and, and let people understand what type of people converted on your website. And Facebook will continue to optimize that ad for you so that we serve those ads to the most relevant audiences possible within our confined budgets. Once this pixel is uh, inserted on our site and we've created those standard events, we can then create dynamic ad templates uh, to show ads depending on uh, the exact user uh, that visited our website, what they did when they visited our website, right? I mean, if I if I just clicked through to your website, I, I might want to show you ad number one, but if you've added something to your shopping cart or if you've joined my email list or if you've purchased from me multiple times in the past 30 days, I might want to show you a different type of ad uh, to upsell you, to, to move you down the marketing funnel. And finally, the Facebook pixel makes it possible for us to analyze those results, refine our marketing spend, and track that spend so that we're able to spend our clients' budget so we can then spend our own brand's budget if you're an entrepreneur uh, most wisely. So how does this look like practically? Well, well, one of the examples that I'd like to tell you about is evergreen ads. So one of the key uh, problems that digital marketers face on a daily basis is what do, why are ads you know, going so great? They look so great at the beginning. We've done great targeting. Perhaps uh, like Trevor mentioned that we cre we've had a, uh, a custom audience uh, in place. Perhaps we've even created a lookalike audience on, on that uh, custom audience that we've uploaded. The ads started great, but oftentimes what happens, they peak and then they begin to die out. The problem that that results in for marketers is that starting over number one takes time. And number two, when we start over in an ad, we lose that social proof, right? That we, you know, consumers would rather purchase a cup of coffee from the brand uh, that's ads has 500 likes on it than five likes, right? And if we start over, we lose all of that social proof uh, that, 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 you know, that, that we've gained with our previous advertisement that simply is no longer effective for us. Why does that happen? Well, the answer is because your audience is likely very dynamic. It doesn't mean that you've created a poor advertisement. It doesn't necessarily mean that your advertisement is not working. What it likely means is that new engagers have entered your audience and they are the ones that need to see this ad. Simply put, you can't expect 
to convert those people who have seen the same ad over and over as if they haven't moved down your funnel or even exited your funnel following seeing an advertisement. Through the Facebook pixel, we're able to create what's called an evergreen advertisement. What an evergreen advertisement allows you to do is to dynamically and continuously serve ads to new, unique, custom audiences that have entered your funnel based on how they've engaged with your content. Right, and a, a person might be in the same type of custom audience, but I need to market to you based on if you visited my site in the past 30 days, and if you haven't visited my site in the last 30 days, I might not want you to see my ad over and over again. Through the Facebook pixel, we're able to create evergreen ads so that marketers aren't having to continuously recreate ads and, uh, you know, and, and, and continue to spend that time only to try to guess and test and, and, and perhaps reach the same audience. Two ways to teach the Facebook pixel, right? So the way number one is through certification. Uh, way number one that I'd like to tell you about is through certifications. Uh, the first certification that's incredibly effective for this uh, is to go straight to the source through the, uh, to, uh, straight to Facebook. Uh, Facebook has a, a resource called Facebook Blueprint that provides great training uh, for marketers and for students. Uh, these trainings are free, but Facebook also has two certification uh, exams to allow your students to you know, put that on a resume or uh, you know, put it into practice through their uh, freelance business that they have. These certification exams, as of right now, are $150. Uh, this is a really rigorous process that, that Facebook uh, has in place. The, to, to get these certifications, uh, you go through a set list of all of these training videos. But these training videos are from the most basic uh, parts, talking about how to set up a Facebook page, how to uh, create new content, and then also there's a significant portion of those uh, that are specifically regarding uh, the Facebook pixel itself. Another uh, resource uh, that, that you can reach out to is, you know, there's any number of uh, Facebook advertising gurus that can teach you this stuff. Uh, one of them, uh, the ones that I, I trust most is, is John Loomer. Um, you know, there's, there are people who will give their, their seal of approval to a lot. Uh, I, I believe in what John Loomer is doing. He has great training resources that many of which are free. Uh, but in his Power Hitters Club, I think the $30 a month membership is incredibly worthwhile for students who are interested in a career in social media advertising, uh, particularly on Facebook. Uh, John Loomer's resources are, are hyper-targeted at, at Facebook, and I, I trust what I've learned from him. He's, he's one of my mentors uh, in this space and, and someone that I get uh, ongoing training from. Uh, resources like Hootsuite Academy are, are, are very great. Uh, the courses are free. Uh, on this and, and Hootsuite Academy certification is $199 uh, for Facebook advertising. Uh, HubSpot is, is, is great as well. Um, I, I've noticed uh, uh, for, for what it's worth in my, in my experience that uh, HubSpot uh, tends to be really great for broad things like inbound marketing, but when we get a little bit more targeted like teaching the Facebook pixel or teaching uh, social media advertising, uh, I, I've been uh, very pleased with what, what I've seen from Hootsuite Academy. Uh, the gold standard of all of this is uh, Udacity's digital uh, nano degree uh, that they have. Uh, obviously, this comes at a, a significantly high expense at, at about $1,000. Uh, and so it's not for every single uh, student. Uh, these are only for students who are very interested in, uh, in digital marketing for their career path. Uh, not just social media marketing, but uh, what Udacity has done with this is created uh, 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 several resources from Google to Facebook to MailChimp, uh, all across the board to, uh, to create a great experience uh, for students. This is a really rigorous program, uh, but in my experience, what I've seen is it is incredibly worth it. I highly recommend you looking into it. Uh, for your own purposes as well. And the second way that we can do this, and I know one of the, uh, the, the reasons that everybody tuned in, uh, was to find out how to practically teach this to your student via class projects. And, 
And the, the best way to do this is through a group simulation. Now, the, the challenge with group simulations, particularly in, uh, in, in with the Facebook pixel, is that, uh, you know, you have to have real marketing spend uh, in order to do this in, in real life. And so what I've done is created uh, an assignment and a simulation for my students uh, that focuses on this from the strategic side uh, of, of things and then allows them to implement that strategy uh, to future employers. So the first thing that uh, I do is assign uh, some video content uh, to uh, the students. I've provided that in a bit.ly link for you guys if you'd like to uh, access that quickly. It's a short video that students uh, would t uh, view before uh, the, the, the course that I'm having this uh, simulation in place. And so they come to class prepared for all of this. Uh, it, it's really a flipped classroom uh, model uh, so that they, they do the learning outside of the classroom and then we're actually implementing it in the classroom. After we've reviewed that video content, chatted with, uh, chatted with students, I allow them to uh, identify themselves as a strategist or a designer. What we do then is uh, provide a real world scenario that I've curated from small businesses uh, across the areas that could be leveraged, uh, that, you know, or that, that businesses that could be leveraging that pixel uh, based on the problem that they are that they are facing. Ads can be set up uh, through Facebook's Creative Hub. Um, so essentially, what you'll have to do prior to this class is to create a mock Facebook page and a mock Facebook ad account. It doesn't necessarily have to have a credit card linked up to it, but then they're able to actually design. Uh, those ads within Facebook uh, so that they can take screenshots of them and practice what it means to actually uh, build a, a Facebook ad. What the strategist does while that uh, designer is creating that ad is to design a strategy uh, in accordance with their client's goal, right? Uh, based on the problem that they're facing, not enough consumers, not having enough data, uh, not knowing what's happening with uh, their their Facebook ad, uh, they can then design that strategy and your 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 designer can design those practical ads. And then what they do is they present it to the class. What's really exciting is, is when you can do this with real world clients. I've, I've done this all the time where the small business owner or the uh, marketing manager actually comes to the presentation themselves. And in, in addition to uh, the students asking questions of this, uh, the, the actual small business owner engages with the student or engages with me as the professor and they're able to you know, practically implement this. I've seen these strategies and I've seen these ad campaigns actually sold to these clients uh, from the students so that they are making actual money uh, or I've seen them launch their career uh, in marketing with an agency or with the business that they did their uh, advertisement on. It, it's pretty exciting uh, when we're able to see that. So how can I explain the value of this uh, to my students? How can you explain the value of this to your students? Well, first of all, you have to differentiate uh, why social media advertising is important, right? And, and one of the key ways that I do this is through uh, differentiating between social media advertising and search advertising. You know, social media advertising, you know, I, I tend to tell them it's, you know, it's more of who you are and search is what you're looking for. Uh, one of the, the resources I really believe in uh, with this is actually Stukin. Uh, students' digital textbook and their upcoming digital uh, texts are, are incredibly, incredibly well thought out, have a lot of practical uh, resources within those with case studies that are real world case studies for uh, businesses that, that, that your students can understand and admire. Uh, and then I like to layer this with Mimic Pro. One of the things that I like to do with Mimic Pro is to contextualize this with my, uh, for my students with a Google AdWords certification. When they get that AdWords certification, along with doing this social media marketing, you start to see eyes open. It starts to make Mimic Pro make more sense on the search side, and it starts to make this uh, social media advertising uh, illustration make more sense to them as well. I encourage you to foster relationships with agency partners uh, across your area particularly. Uh, this can pay dividends for your uh, both the student and the agency provide, by providing them uh, a, a ready dose of, of human capital uh, in, in the form of interns and, and entry-level marketers. Invite these agencies into your classroom to share their experience, to share those problems uh, that they're facing and let your student, unleash your students to help, uh, unleash your students to help solve those problems.
And then I encourage you to invest in continuing education uh, through a resource like John Loomer or to uh, let your students know about these certifications that I've shared with you today and provide some extra credit opportunities for them uh, to gain these certifications to, uh, to extend their career. Uh, guys, thank you so much for your time uh, and, and everything with this. Uh, please feel free to uh, download this deck via my LinkedIn profile. I'd love to connect with you. Uh, and if you have social media advertising questions that I didn't cover in this or you'd like to learn more, uh, please feel free to connect. I'm happy to answer those for you. Thank you so much for your time and attention, guys. Fantastic. Thank you, Ryan. So let's uh, let's get into some questions. Um, we had a few come in. Let me just pull them up real quick. So the first question is, Ryan, the, the Facebook pixel, so do we actually get more data um, by use on, on, on a consumer or um, a visitor on the Facebook pixel rather than the Google, using Google JavaScript tags? Uh, well, these are these are analyzing two different things. Um, so, you know, this, what the Facebook pixel is not is it's not a replacement for things like Google conversion tagging or Google analytics on your site. These things work in concert uh, with each other with your paid marketing spend on Facebook. Um, so more data, uh, certainly it's more data, but it doesn't supplant the importance of, of tagging on, on the Google side uh, or anything like that. I hope that answered that question. Yeah, so here's a great question from Scott. Uh, can you think of any realistic ways to get students actually making money through Facebook advertising as part of a class? Absolutely. So uh, for students to make money on this uh, with part of the class, the first thing that uh, you've got to do is to develop community partnerships. Uh, and that's the hard legwork that you've got to do yourself. Um, and so what I do is I, I talk to those, uh, you know, those small businesses. Uh, one of the helpful things that we have in Chattanooga is a strong innovation center uh, within Chattanooga to uh, you know, help connect with small businesses that are just starting out. And, and what we do is explain to them the preparation that our students have had from a digital marketing perspective. Uh, we make sure to share my credentials uh, with with these folks so that they know that we're not just unleashing uh, some 21 year olds to represent uh, their brand that, that somebody is overseeing uh, this and that they're they're doing this alongside the the business owner and we tell the business owner what that what their time is worth and and so uh, you know we actually create these ads we create these advertising strategies uh, for these businesses and we charge them for it uh, and and with small businesses, particularly ones that are just starting out, uh, or ones that have a, a really defined team, uh, like, a, like a, a marketing agency or, um, or, or like a larger company that has a marketing, uh, marketing team in place that can oversee this. Uh, I, I've been very pleased at the, the level of faith and the level of trust that they've had in these students when they have that proof of the university behind them. And, uh, and and a professor behind them to create this. Okay. Yeah, you can't be afraid to put a price on uh, on on their skills. One of the things that I make sure uh, to share with my students on this is that that your work is worth money, um, and your work is worth something, whether that's experience and or uh, dollars and cents. Uh, and so, uh, absolutely, we our our goal is to to make this uh, make money on the, both the front end and and on the back end. If uh, with in my digital marketing class, they create a marketing strategy for their final project. And based on the, the real world company that they choose for their project, I, I let that company know with the student's per, uh, permission. And we try to set a price on that marketing strategy uh, with them. Uh, and we try to set a price on it on the back end as well of, for when they implement it. Um, and, and I've seen a lot of careers launched and uh, candidly thousands of dollars made by my students with this. It's been really exciting. Cool. Uh, you talked about some certifications, and I know through the chat, um, some have have jumped on and and um, submitted a few links or awesome. uh, some certifications that are free. Uh, yeah. One of them being the Hootsuite um, social media certification, 
uh, through their educational platform. Um, are there any others that you can think of out there that yeah. are free or, or provide some sort of education or student discount? Yeah, you know, uh, some of the free ones that I, I really believe in, uh, one of the, the certifications that I get my students uh, to, to I'll, I'll, get, I'll share with you two. Um, first of all, the, the HubSpot inbound marketing certification is, is very good. Uh, and, and HubSpot has a, a series of certifications that are no cost uh, to students. And, and like I said, I, I, I have my graduate level uh, digital marketing students get the HubSpot inbound marketing certification. Um, I'm actually going to share you three. Um, from the email side of things, uh, Skillshare has a strategic partnership with MailChimp. Um, and one of the authors of Nicely Said that I shared with you, Kate Kiefer Lee, uh, is on the team at MailChimp. And uh, they have a significant level, uh, number of email marketing projects uh, that don't take very much time uh, and that are on the free level uh, with Skillshare. You have to have a Skillshare account, um, but uh, they are free uh, with that basic Skillshare uh, account. And then Google's Digital Garage is great as well. Um, the, the Digital Garage is, is great on, on Google. And then uh, I strongly encourage, I, I, I tell my students I max out their extra credit uh, if uh, they will get Google Analytics and Google AdWords certification uh, at both levels. Uh, cool. Talk about uh, writing your ticket into an entry level uh, oh. position at an agency. Uh, as an agency owner myself, I've, I've hired uh, former students who have these uh, AdWords certifications and yeah. ha have put them into practice right away. Uh, so those are those are three that I would really uh, recommend for you. Awesome, thank you. Uh, what's the going back to the the previous question? What's the average rate that you can typically charge? Uh, for the partnerships that you have with uh, your classes or, st or student groups? Great question. We charge between $20 and $30 an hour for student work. Okay. Um, how do you tee up? Or, uh, if you don't mind if I share too, on the, on the uh, actual strategy side, we'll usually flat rate that at a couple hundred bucks um, for, uh, for folks to, to just have that document and then to sit in on the class and have a discussion with me and, and the student team. Okay. Good to know. Thank you. How do you typically tee up this this conversation of of um, teaching students about the, the Facebook pixel and everything that, that happens after that? Are you introducing them first to uh, pay per click? Or are you bring looping in um, search engine optimization? I guess at what part of the class are you bringing this or introducing this into your uh, into the coursework? That's an outstanding question. Um, so the way that I structure my classes, I, I, I tell students it's like building a house. Um, the, the first thing that we do in our digital marketing uh, course is I'm going to teach you about all of the different bricks, right? Uh, we're we're, we're going to cover search engine optimization. We're going to cover what it takes to make a great website. We're going to cover social media uh, content on the B2C and B2B uh, content side. Uh, we're going to cover uh, paid search advertising. We're going to cover social media advertising. Uh, we're going to cover content, actually, how, how, how to craft great content, email marketing. And so that happens in the first part of the semester. And that's when I start telling them about tools like this. In the second part, of, and, th and then we have a midterm to ensure that they know all of those bricks properly. Um, in the second part of the semester, uh, what we teach them to do to continue the house metaphor uh, is we teach them to build a house at that point. Uh, we teach them how to put that together into a defined digital marketing strategy. Um, and so that's when this stuff starts to get really practical. Um, and so we, we teach them the principles of, of social media marketing in the first part of the semester. And then I start to have this project that you uh, uh, that I told you about in that second part of the semester um, so that uh, this can be a part of that, that comprehensive uh, digital marketing strategy that contains uh, the company's website strategy uh, and, and things like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome. Great. Uh, you did rec mention some book titles in the beginning, and I don't think anyone answered that. Um, do you happen to have those off the top of your? Absolutely. Um, so from the writing side uh, of things, uh, I, I, I really believe it's one of the books that I, I, I make my students purchase. It's a book called Nicely Said. 
<clears throat> by Kate Kiefer Lee, uh, who works with uh, the team at MailChimp, uh, and then Nicole Fenton as well. Uh, it's a, a fairly short read, um, but uh, it's wonderfully practical. Uh, you know, the, the goal of what uh, these two women did with this book is, you know, we often teach our students how to write fantastic five paragraph essays, but a five paragraph essay and a tweet are two different things. Uh, they, they require unique skills. And so what Nicely Said does is teaches them to write as a form of design. And, um, and so, you know, how, how do we craft a compelling web copy? How do we craft compelling uh, social media content, email content, uh, things like that? And then the second text that I, I, I really believe in on the writing side uh, is by Ann Handley. Um, and it's called uh, Everybody Writes. Uh, it's a New York Times bestseller. Uh, it's a little more extensive, a little more meaty, um, but uh, my family does an incredible job with that text. Uh, I, I really believe in it. Cool. Um, I think questions, we're all caught up with questions. So unless there are any last minute ones coming in, um, we'll transition um, out of uh, Ryan's presentation. Ryan, we appreciate your time, the effort you put into the, the uh, slide deck and the presentation. Um, I think we will be seeing you at ProfCon. In, in Absolutely, few, guys. I hope to see everybody at ProfCon this summer. Uh, I'll be presenting at ProfCon uh, as well uh, and expanding this discussion to more of a full scale across the web. How do we uh, teach our students some practical projects and practical skills uh, in the digital marketing uh, perspective? So hope to see everybody in Yellowstone this summer. Great. Cool. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. Awesome, guys.